Inhabiting this beautiful part of Mount Elgon in eastern Uganda is the Sabine community, a sub-tribe of the larger Kalenjin ethnic group. The beauty of the region is simply breathtaking. However, underneath this beauty lies something very dark, a centuries-old traditional culture of female genital mutilation, FGM. FGM is the partial or full removal of the female genitalia, a practice that greatly infringes on the rights of women and denies them the chance to live a fulfilled life. They forced me, when I was just a senior, they forced me to for marriage. In marriage again, I was again forced because it was a year for circumcision. I became a victim of circumcision. I was circumcised in 1990. When I was an of five months pregnancy, I, I, I got shocked. I bled a lot. I even fainted with a lot of shame. I was unable to be alive even, but it was just because of God's grace. That's why my life is now. Then five, four months reached for labor, because it was five months, time of circumcision. Then four months reached for labor. I was unable to push the baby because of the hard scar. It was, it compacted. After being cut, I was deep cut, rooted. Then the scar became too hard for me to push the baby. I was unable to make it. I was just seized both sides. But when I was to push the baby, I got physical problem. National Association of Women Organizations in Uganda, NAWU, with funding from Womankind Worldwide, has for the past two years been implementing the Rise Up project in Kwen District which aims at mobilizing the women and girls to combat FGM and child marriages in Sebe region. Now was formed as an umbrella organization to promote uh, gender equality and to fight for any kind of injustice uh, on women. So female genital mutilation is a form of gender-based violence, which is uh, a just cause for now to implement that project in Kuen district. The objectives of the project, one is to do with economic empowerment of the communities, especially the girls and the women who have not undergone FGM, because uh, many of them are neglected. The second objective is to strengthen joint advocacy uh, to regulate the occurrence of FGM uh, in Kuen district. So through dialogue meetings and engagement of various stakeholders, we've been able to, the project has been able to create awareness mm, about FGM and its dangers, and also to popularize the FGM Act. And then the third objective is to seek to change the attitude mm, of the community mm, uh, on FGM for them to realize that it is illegal it's a violation of the rights of women and girls, and therefore the communities should actually fight and abandon the practice. Now who came when we were already on the way, yeah, trying to address this uh, negative traditional practice, and they came and accelerated our efforts. So we have had a very good collaborative uh, working relationship with Nau. Uh, in those communities that we have worked with them, uh, we have registered a lot of successes already. And we want to appreciate now because they came in with the new approaches. The combat approach was good for us. Uh, even sponsorship of the girls has been very good for us because uh, we have had some girls who had dropped out of school and had even undergone FGM, coming back and going back to school. So for me, it has been good. One of the factors that has perpetuated FGM has been poverty. To economically empower the women and girls, 
Nau is supporting 10 women groups of 30 unmutilated women to be financially stable to meet their basic needs and the needs of their families. Depending on their husbands for financial needs has helped to perpetuate FGM and child marriages. These groups have been trained on the village savings and loan associations methodologies which include financial literacy, business skills and income generating activities. <laughs> Nau also supported each of these groups with a seed capital of 1,650,000 shillings to boost their savings. The village savings and loan associations have enabled women to access credit facilities at low interest rates and set up flourishing small businesses. Nauu <laughs> These empowered women are not only providing for their families, they have also become advocates against FGM and child marriages. Their meetings have also become a safe place for them to discuss about FGM and coming up with ways of ensuring it does not happen to their girls. <laughs> To achieve zero FGM cases, empowerment of the girl child from an early age about the negative impact of the vice and enrolling them in school is crucial. Through the Rise Up project, Nau is supporting the education of eight girls in primary, secondary and tertiary institutions. I appreciate womankind for the chance they have given to me. And with, if this chance wouldn't be there, I would be in the village just staying there or married. But I'm now at school ready to learn and to fulfill my dreams of becoming a doctor and to treat, to treat my members of the community. I have two parents who are living in the 
yo go go kwa na wo rit ko ka lele kwa ne gli banda gari ga sigul la ajem bang tuni la jinyur so amen jeng ma wole ya ga ji nam ji ma ji ka lele kwa ji ma jeg nyoru ki la ge nya e ma ji ko ka le ga am sigul u uniform ke ta bona ke ki la ge ya ga to ko che supporting an le kwa ne go to ga che ko kwe klo mak to educating these girls will ensure that they live full productive lives and they enjoy their rights as they contribute to the development of their communities Parents of these girls have also been sensitized to respect the rights of their children and play their roles in ensuring the girls remain in school to achieve their dreams. We translated the parenting guidelines to Cook Sabi, okay, using the people from the district, okay, the language experts from the district. So we translated it to a language that they understand. And we all know that during the formative years of a child, the child should be raised well and so we expect the cooks have been to understand the importance of being a good parent to their children including the girls besides educating the girls nau has also trained several girls and boys as mentees in different schools to end fgm and child marriages in kwen district these pupils and students have been instrumental in sensitizing their colleagues parents and the communities using radio talk shows about the drivers and effects of FGM. In schools, we sensitize our friends to disease from the bad practices like FGM and child early first marriages. Then in dramas, we, in dramas, we, do, the, we do FGM Act, child early first marriages and the children rights. In radio talk shows of recent, we went to the radio talk show, but the part I was handling was the strategies of ending FGM, the causes of FGM, and the dangers of FGM. I would like to thank the NOW program who have helped me to gain confidence that I cannot undergo FGM, and I urge my fellow friends to desist from those bad practices. I thank now for having undertaken me through the mentorship program. So from now onwards, I grow up as a responsible citizen, such that in my community, with the adequate knowledge and skills I have, I can boldly say no to this practice, that's FGM, and I can grow up with the negative attitude that FGM is a bad practice and I should do whatever it takes me in order to see that this phase is greatly ended in our community. To sensitize the people about the dangers of FGM and the need to educate the girl child, Nau trained several community-based action teams commonly known as combats and mentors. These have become critical foot soldiers in the fight against FGM. As a trained person, I always go feast homes where there are a lot of fights, where there are also girls who are to be who are being to prepare to be cut. I have been sharing ideas with them about this bad practice. So I would like to say thank you, humankind. Thank you, Nau, for the training you gave me, wisdom and understanding, and I will make sure that I will be feasting all homes where girls are and their parents to make sure that no FGM all early child marriage in my area. To ensure success in advocating for norm change and an end to harmful cultural practices like FGM, Nawu has worked closely with national district, religious, cultural and opinion leaders.
In order to address the advice of FGM, Nau engaged the national and grassroots leaders, including parliament, justice law and order sector, formal and informal institutions, to advocate for the reform and implementation of the FGM Act. Going forward, supporting alternative rights of passage for girls and women will ensure that positive aspects of culture are adopted and the negative practices like FGM and child marriages are discarded. Much as we are agreed that we want to eliminate the actual action of genital cutting, but we want to retain the mentorship, the teaching and training process that our girls undergo before they become ready for marriage or ready for adulthood. We think and believe that if we get the partnership of people like Nau, who are already, eh, who are already doing something, they are acquainted with the communities down there, uh, it will be very beneficial to this process of eliminating female genital mutilation to contribute to the training of trainers and then later the training of the mentors themselves and after that the actual training of the young girls through a process which we want to take one year. It's our desire that there will be another phase to carry on this project. First of all, to depend on the interventions in areas where we have been and also to expand to other areas. The key focus is alternative rites of passage, okay, because girls need to, to go to school. And then attitude change, okay, and to fight that secrecy that is associated with FGM. So, you know, the community needs to know that this is a practice which is no longer acceptable. It is even criminal. Mm? So why continue doing something which is criminal?